let's look at uh, your definition of metaverse to start. Well, definition of metaverse is a uh, uh, highly interconnected and uh, a hyperscaled multi-user network of 3D worlds where people will be able to uh, play, work, entertain themselves, connect with people, transact, and move seamlessly from one 3D world to another, exactly like we do right now, moving from a website to another to our browser in a seamless way, bringing with them their own identity, their own currency, and so on. And being able also to uh, get digital assets and digital information to bleed into the real world which probably is one of the most fascinating aspects of the metaverse, this uh, interconnectivity between this uh, uh, ecosystem of digital worlds that are completely fictional and uh, uh, digital assets that will bleed and augment our real world. As I said before, if the medium is the message at the end of the day, the, as mobile phones change the way that we uh, connect and, and, and interact with people, extended reality and metaverse technologies will change completely the way that we think and we we perceive the reality around us uh digital or real is uh, the, the 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 different kind of shades will make no sense in the future everything will be reality for us if it's going to be digital reality or if it's going to be real reality uh, the, the the boundaries will blur more and more and more with time so from this definition that you just mentioned so there's there's a component of uh, the real the virtual and the immersive um, and this is actually uh, is not different for us. We look at history of religion, the history of of arts and different things. Of course, this touches a lot of different. Even the way we perceive, for instance, if you look at Renaissance again in Italy with uh, Leonardo da Vinci, with the uh, chiaroscuro, or with the uh, the perspective and so forth. But I think the point right now is that this is actually we can start. We can pass an entire day in front of devices like what you do right now. But like you said, you can right now create. Um, new worlds where we interact and I think especially for our age group I think you and me are an exception but most of the people right now so if you look at children um, they are already in Roblox like you mentioned before we talk about 500 million children every day and probably 1 billion people per day if you look at uh, the multiple platforms live so how can we look at this because this, let's say there's over 1 billion people that are interacting with this and, nine, and there are another 7 billion people that are a bit lost on this or 6 well, if you think about it, Roblox right now has 53 million unique users per day. To Just to put it into perspective, um, and this is an example that I like to do because it's close to my, my heart, because I, I, I lived in Milan for nine years. One of the largest shopping districts in Europe, which is uh, uh, Via Vittoria Emanuele in Milan, uh, has something like 23 million visitors per year. So... It's an incredible opportunity for brands, companies, but even people that would like to create their own business, the creator economy, as I was saying, to get a lot of exposure and uh, to, to a lot of people, a lot of eyeballs. So um, I think that um, some of the use cases that we're exploring right now, as I'm, I'm also talking about in my book, are what we call digital primitives. So it's a it's a sort of um, imitation of what previous use case were um, done on previous technologies and previous medium, uh, digital assets that are tokenized or uh, digital clothing uh, and so on. The real transformational power of these kind of technologies like three D worlds, blockchain, AI, and and quantum will arise probably in about three to five years when we will truly have real standards, where we'll truly have real interconnectivity between the worlds. And so we all have a global economy of the metaverse. Right now, let's not forget that buying a car in the metaverse in one of those platforms is like buying a car in London and be able to drive it only in London. You cannot really go somewhere else to France or to, 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 to Scotland or to Portugal, for example. You can only stay in London. Uh, when the global economy of the metaverse and the, 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 the standards for interconnectivity will be made, there will be an explosion of business. And right now, I mean, it's already pretty valuable in terms of, of, of amount of money that these platforms can generate. And also the induct of all the companies that are working in the metaverse business, providing services like, for example, Accenture, is, is pretty huge at the moment. So the opportunity is, is big. 
the the way that we need to see this technology is as an evolving emerging infrastructure um many people don't realize that the real value of the metaverse right now is not in the metaverse per se because the metaverse is not done is like seeing the real value in going to the moon when people didn't go to the moon uh yet so it's it's important to understand that the real value of going to the moon is because we we did a lot of research. We learned a lot of things. It changed our life. We invented a lot of technologies that changed our life, and 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 changed our life for the better. Um, right now, we are, and what we are doing at Accenture, for example, is to provide consulting services to our clients, not just putting use cases in front of the client directly, saying, "Okay, you know, you have to build your bank branch in the metaverse." Doesn't make any sense. Does it provide any value? No. But maybe tokenize some of your asset or create a new stream of business completely using this kind of technologies. Think about automotive companies that right now are not capitalizing from second, third, and fourth hand market. Imagine if you connect the key to uh, open a car to an NFT or to a token, and then what you when you sell the car to the final user you sell the token, you don't sell the car. Then the, the car, of course, is connected and getting reached with data and information about the usage of the car. And then when the user sells that token to the next buyer secondhand, they transact the token, not the car itself. And along with the car, you get all the data about the usage of the car so that the person that purchases the car can make an informed decision, but also all the paperwork that is related to the car and eventually the insurance of the car and so on to make the transaction seamless. And uh, at this point, basically what you do is to transact a token from one person to the other and the automotive company can get a percentage of that sale because it's providing the service of tracking all the data and so on. So they can capitalize to a market that right now is completely untapped. And this is an opportunity. And imagine this for uh, an item that is depreciated with time. Imagine what would be possible with an item that is appreciating with time, like for example, real estate. And, and we know how painful and difficult it is to transact a house from one owner to the other. Imagine if it would be so easy and seamless as transact an NFT. Th these are all really highly transformational use cases that can provide true transformational value to our clients. It's not just about Roblox. It's about a new kind of economy that can be unlocked through these kind of technologies. No, completely. And I think there's a lot of things that we need to consider.